First and Second Kings narrate the declining fortunes of both the northern and southern kingdoms. Occasionally there is a reforming king in one realm or the other, but on the whole the direction is downward. Some Orientation 1 Kings chapter 16 1. Although First and Second Kings treat both the northern and the southern kingdoms, the emphasis is on the former. By contrast, First and Second Chronicles, which cover roughly the same material, tilt strongly in favor of the kingdom of Judah. 2. In the south, the Davidic dynasty continues. During its history, there are, humanly speaking, some very close calls. Nevertheless, God preserves the line. His entire redemptive purposes are bound up with continuity of that Davidic line. The stance throughout is well expressed in 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 4. Abijah, king of Judah, who reigned only three years, was doubtless an evil king. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem by raising up a son to succeed him and by making Jerusalem strong. In the north, however, no dynasty survives very long. The dynasty of Jeroboam lasted two generations and then was butchered, chapter 15, verses 25 through 30, replaced by Baasha, verses 33 through 34. His dynasty likewise produced two kings, and then the males in his family were wiped out by Zimri, chapter 16, verses 8 through 13, whose reign lasted all of seven days, verses 15 through 19. And so it goes. If the Davidic line continues in the south, it is all of grace. 3. These successions in the north are brutal and bloody. For instance, after Zimri, the citizens of Israel face a brief civil war, divided as they are between Omri and Tibni. The followers of the former win. The text Riley comments, So Tibni died, and Omri became king. Chapter 16, verse 22. In short, there is a perennial lust for power, few systems for orderly handover of government, no hearty submission to the living God. 4. From God's perspective, however, the severity of the sin is measured first and foremost not in terms of the bloody violence, but in terms of the idolatry. For example, chapter 16, verses 30 through 33. Omri was a strong ruler who strengthened the nation enormously, but little of that is recorded. From God's perspective, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord and sinned more than all those before him. Chapter 16, verse 25. Building programs and a rising GDP do not make up for idolatry. 5. Details in these accounts often tie the narrative to events much earlier and later. Thus, the rebuilding of Jericho, chapter 16, verse 34, calls to mind the curse on the city when it was destroyed centuries earlier. Joshua chapter 6 verse 26. The founding of the city of Samaria, chapter 16 verse 24, anticipates countless narratives of what takes place in that city, including Jesus and the woman at the well. John chapter 4. See the March 14 meditation.